Welcome students, thank you for joining in. This should be for my secondary math 1H classes, that's periods 1, 2, 4, and 5, and this is for the week of April 27th through May 1st. This week we are going to cover sections 3.4 and 4.1. Remember, we finished up chapter 12 last time, that was on getting triangles to be congruent. Just to catch up on that though, we had side angle side. The other ones that I didn't cover were very similar to that. We have side, 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 angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg are other ways to get triangles congruent. Uh, again, it's very similar to what we did, so you guys got a really good taste of Chapter 12 and, and what that does. Again, I want to go back and catch some main topics. So this week, again, 3, 4, and 4, 1 deal with going back to linear functions. And again, we're going to take a look from the computer first walk you through that, and then I'll come back to the whiteboard and do a few problems for you. All right, so let's take a look at section 3.4. This is uh, from your ebook, and I'm at page 130. And we're looking at, today what I've selected on 3.4 is writing uh, e or graphing equations in standard form. So we've looked at slope-intercept form, which was the y equals mx plus b. Standard form, remember, is ax plus by is equal to c. And this comes up quite often with story problems. And with this, if you follow this down here, our core concept, remember horizontal and vertical lines. These come up all the time in math. Horizontal lines, remember the equation for those is always y is equal to whatever. In this case, if b were equal to 3, y is equal to 3 would be a horizontal line at 3. Because notice, it doesn't matter what the x-coordinate is, as long as your y-coordinate would always be 3, it's going to be a horizontal line. x equals anything is always a vertical line. So this could be like x equals 2. If this was over 2 units to the right, these are all values where x is 2. All right. Then we have, and they just go, walk you through some graphing of those. That should be really easy with the tutorials there. So check those guys out. All right, then if you go over to page 131, for graphing um, using standard form, the key with this is remember the intercepts, the x and the y intercepts. You guys are very familiar with the y intercept. That is where the line crosses the y axis at. And that would be on this line, this blue line right here crosses right here. That point B would be your y intercept. But every line also has an x intercept unless it's horizontal. But if the line is not horizontal, it's going to cross the x axis somewhere. That's called the x intercept. And the key with this is finding the x and y intercepts when you're graphing in standard form. So the whole key with this, remember, is to basically to find the x intercept, that's when y is 0. To find the y intercept, that is when x is 0. And if you think about it, that makes sense. This x intercept is the point four zero, it's when y value is zero. The y-intercept in this one is the point three because that's when your x is zero. And that's why you let x be zero and y be zero to find your x and y-intercepts. And again, they walk you through a couple of monitoring progress problems there. So check those out. Then we have a problem here dealing with our standard form. And this is a nice type of problem where you get, when you, when you write up a problem and you come up with the equation for it from a story problem, a lot of times it ends up being in standard form. Here's a case where you are renting tables to seat 180 people and your smaller ones seat 6 and your larger ones seat 10. So your equation for this is going to be 6 times x because 6 times every small table plus 10 times y, every large table, has to equal your 180. So this models that situation. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to graph that guy. When you graph that, remember the whole key with this is finding your two intercepts. So to find your intercepts, for the y-intercept, you'd cover up the x. That would mean if all you had were large tables, you would need 18 of them. So when you notice when you go to graph this, this is the point 0, 018. If all you wanted to do was find the x-intercept, you're going to cover up the y. 6 times 30 is 180. That means 
you would only need 30 small tables and zero large tables. So this point 30, zero represents your x-intercept. 30 small and zero large tables. The 0, 18 is your y-intercept, which means zero large tables, or zero small tables, rather, 18 large tables. And when you graph those two points, you're just going to make a solid line through those. But the one thing you've got to remember is, remember when we talked about if a value is continuous or discrete, a function? Remember, this is a function. This is a function, which means every input has one and only one output. So for this one, if you input zero, you're going to get out 18, and that's the only value you're going to get for that. If you input 30, you're only going to get zero. This is a function. It's a linear function, and we draw it here with a solid line, which means it's continuous. However, in reality, remember this would be discrete because you cannot have like a half or a third of a table. So on this, you're really looking for the points that hit exactly. So you'd have to follow this line and see where it hits right on, which right here on this one looks like it hits. It looks like at the point 20 for X and 6 for Y. So 20 for X would make that 100, 6 times 20 is 120, plus 6 for Y, 10 times 6 is 60, 120 plus 60 would give you your 180. So here, right here, is another combination of small and large tables that would work. All right. They give you another uh, monitoring progress here. It just changes one of the values. So here's your equation for this one. And again, what you're going to do is you're going to find your x and y intercepts. You're going to graph those, get your line. You would draw it in as a solid line, but remember it's really discrete, so you're just really looking for the points that hit right on. Okay, and then here's your assignment for this. This should be really straightforward. Uh, for these, again, you remember the whole key is cover up the x for the y-intercept, cover up the y for the x-intercept. And on here, again, you've got a few different problems with this, some pretty good ones, but that is your section 3.1. All right. I'm sorry, 3.4 rather. Then I also assigned section 4.1. So 4.1, we are going to go to page 166. So 166, here we go. All right, so I also assigned this, which again, the 4.1 is dealing with writing equations in slope intercept form. So this is, which is really key for for secondary one, is slope intercept form for line. You've got to know how to do this. And here, they're just walking you through some of these, the y equals mx plus b. Take a look at those examples. Should be no problem with those. Here, remember to find slope, change in y over change in x. So here we find the slope negative 1 subtract 5, that's your change in y, divided by 0 subtract a negative 3, that's your change in x. Change in y, change in x. Slope, rate of change. All right, then it gives you guys some more problems here with your monitoring progress. Again, check those out. Shouldn't be a problem. Then if you go to page 168, it has a linear model for you, and this one is a really good problem, and this is really why standard form, or with uh, slope intercept rather, is really critical. You could take equations and you can take actual story problems and turn them into an equation. Now to do this one, they walk you through this one, but the main idea with this one is you're basing this off of the year 2007. So the one coordinate on this would be the 0, 105, because 0, the x value represents the number of years since 2007. That is critical, the number of years since 2007. That's why your first point is 0, 105. This would represent, again, the year 2007. There was 105 million megawatt hours. 
And then the second point is five. Well, five would represent the year. Well, it would be the year 2012 because it's five years since 2007. And then from there, here's your two points. You find your rate of change. Then you're going to go back to your y equals mx plus b. And you are going to uh, solve for that. And you're going to get your um, value for y here to be your 333. Okay, they give you some monitoring progress here. Very similar to that one. So please give that one a shot. Check out the tutorial on that one. Should be really good. Then here are our problems for this one. And again, I have assigned several of these guys. And I'm going to take a look at number 29 with you guys on the whiteboard here to check that one out. All right, let's take a look at problem number 29 from section 4.1. Uh, because this problem might give you a little bit of trouble. Now, let, me, let me look at this one. So it's a basically a story problem dealing with the world record for the mile. And in 1960, it was 3.91 minutes. And in 1980, it was 3.81 minutes, which makes sense. So the time is coming down as the time increases. So as time goes up, this one comes down. We know we're looking at a negative rate of change. So to find this, we're going to do slope intercept form. Remember, is y equals mx plus b. Y is equal to mx plus b. To do this problem, what you're going to do is you're going to base this off of 1960. So this 1960 and 3.91 really is the coordinate 0, 3.91. Because it's 0 times since 1960. 1980 is 20 years past that. So the x coordinate is going to be 20. Because again, the, in, the x coordinate is the amount of time past 1960. So we're going to let this be t time since 1960. So in 1960, it was zero years since 1960. And in 1980, it was 20 years past that. And it was 3.81 for this. So we have the amount of time since 1960 and the actual time in the one mile run. So for this, we're going to do y equals our mx plus b. Remember, m is our rate of change. So the rate of change is the change in the dependent coordinate, or the y. So 3.91 minus 3.81 is 0 0.1 over change in our x, which in this case is the amount of time since 1960, which is negative 20. So for this one, we get a slope, our m, when we simplify this, is going to be negative 5 thousandths. What this rate of change means is that the amount of time for the mile goes down on average about five thousandths of a minute every year. All right, so now we're going to plug in these values here. So we're going to have y, which again, y represents the amount of time it takes for t number of years since 1960. And since we're using 1960 as our base here, it's going to be plus 3.91. So right here is our equation for this guy, which makes sense. If you put in zero for t here, that would mean basically the year 1960. In 1960, our output y would be 3.91. If you put in 20 for t, that would represent 20 years past 1960, you end up getting... 3.81. So this is your equation, and this should really help you with part B on this for this problem. Hopefully you made it through this whole YouTube. I know these might get a little long, but I am really hoping that these help you guys out with these problems. Stay positive with this. I hope you're staying healthy, and uh, we will get through this. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next week.